All right, Fantasy Footballers is brought to you by Head & Shoulders and Walmart. NFL fans always love arguing whether is it offense that wins the game or is it defense? You know, I think offense. Head & Shoulders is great offense for your hair. Andy, you're wrong. Head & Shoulders is great defense for the flakes. Ah, no matter where you fall on the debate, Head & Shoulders will give you 100% flake-free scalp. Find Head & Shoulders on (laughs) Walmart.com. What's going on, Phoenix? It's a smoky room. What's going on? Who hit the smoke machine? Not enough if you ask me. There's a terrible fairy tale about to happen. I've seen this before. This is going to be very, very awkward. I know we're kind of on the top of our game right now, but we're stepping away. (laughs) Going to retire. (laughs) Oh, our our comrades, our Indianapolis comrades in the front. Our, Our condolences. Three hours ago was awesome. Never forget. Unbelievable evening. Welcome in. We have a great show for you today. Brooks is here. Oh, Brooksy! The judge. I thought we had a great show prepared. I thought we didn't have news to talk about. I guess we have some news to talk about. (laughs) Yeah, that's news too. Oh, the, the, the Lamar Miller. Unbelievable. No one cares about that anymore. That's that's an hour and a half ago. Unbelievable. We've got a great show for you. You guys ready to go? You ready for the mailbag drop? Oh, they sound ready. It's good to be home. It's good to be home. It's fantastic I'm on the mailbag home. drop right here at home. This is by far the biggest Phoenix show we've ever had. And the smokiest. Oh. I can see some people. <laughs> One or two. I'm, gr- I'm glad I brought the inhaler out. Yes. All right. Brooks, are we ready to go? Yeah, let's do it. All right, let's do it. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Coming to you from the SteenAuction.com studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Woo. Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. Welcome in. The People's Fantasy Tour concludes tonight. Yes, it does. Right here in Phoenix. What's going on? Now, we have, uh, last year in Phoenix, we did this show. We brought out some bold predictions. We're doing it again tonight. Oh, I've got a good one for the top of the show. <laughs> it's too it's too hot, Mike. There's, there's, like, when we throw them out in this show, you think there's no way that this can possibly happen, but it just might. It just might happen. We normally get right into the quick question, and we have a great one there as well. But I have to hit this button. Breaking news. Well, what? <laughs> Today is, uh, this show's being recorded on the single busiest draft day of the entire year. <laughs> yeah, good thing everything <laughs> stays status quo. Andrew Luck, 29 year old quarterback for the Indianapolis Colts, has retired. What a world. Yeah. 
<laughs> We're getting some cheers. Is there anybody? Some booze. This news broke in about an hour before we started this show. Is there anybody in the audience that didn't know until just now? I'm sorry. <laughs> Someone's in the back. I got Andrew Luck in the twelfth. It was crazy. He just kept dropping. <laughs> so I snatched him up. So we updated our ultimate draft kit, and somebody sent me a note. And they screenshotted it, and you see down, 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 down. down. All the Colts are down. And they said, is there, is there Colts news I don't know about? Nope. Just a gut feeling. <laughs> Just a gut. We've got real good intuition. So we're starting with the breaking news. We'll circle back to the quick question. Let me read you the physical toll on Andrew Luck through six years. Torn cartilage and two ribs. Partially, partially torn abdomen. Lacerated kidney. One concussion. Torn labrum. And then this mysterious calf slash teeny tiny bone injury new and, bone new but, bone but this is the most shocking thing to happen in the nfl and in fantasy football in as long as i can remember i can't think of another thing that you know this close to the season for a player to retire and not just like a player this isn't like oh it was a you know a journeyman right guard ryan fitzpatrick he's, he's finally up. hangs them up <laughs> No, this is Andrew Luck. This was, I mean, early in the off season, prior to the the calf injuries. <laughs> the Colts were my Super Bowl yeah. pick. Yeah, and how's just, your tickets looking right now, dude? I, look, I just, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. This is a bold pivot. prediction. So, a pivot. Bold prediction show. I'm going to right now, right here, predict Super Spot. I don't think it comes true. <laughs> I don't think the Colts win the Super Bowl anymore. Spicy. Beyond Andrew Luck, who went from not playing in 2017 to comeback player of the year, 39 touchdowns last season, to now retiring, T.Y. Hilton, Marlon Mack, Naeem oof, Hines, Eric oof. Ebron. What happens now? It, I think it's pretty rough. Um, you know, the, the, in, in truth, when I updated my rankings, as insane as it is, the only person that even looks like they could be of value for the Colts in my rankings is actually oh, yes. Mr. Jacoby Beef Brisket oh. himself. <laughs> Jacoby hey, Brisket. The <laughs> there it is. <laughs> but I mean, we, we had to dig through the vaults. Uh, that's old. That's then, old. That's real old. Andy, I know uh, we disagree a little bit on the outlook for T.Y. Hilton. T.Y. Hilton, I now have as in half point scoring as my wide receiver 27. So he's not irrelevant. He's still going to be a fantasy contributor. There were, there were like audible moans and groans when you said that. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it stinks. You take a guy who had the Some from my dynasty team. To be, oh, man, I remember having him yeah, this you offseason. Traded, you traded him to T.Y. me. T.Y. Hilton, twice in his illustrious career, twice, has been under the 1,000-yard mark. Once was his rookie season, and once was the year that he played the entire year without Andrew Luck. Yeah, it's not good. <laughs> it's not good for T.Y. Hilton. He's a player that can lead the lead lead the league in yardage with a quarterback. We both move Jacoby Brissett to the twenty range at the quarterback position based on what we think he can do. I think he was the best backup in the league, arguably. But you're going from a top five quarterback to a twenty at best, and this is unfortunate. Now the situation for Jacoby Brissett isn't the same that it was. In 2017. No, it's much better. Um, different coaching staff. I mean, you've spent most I of your offseason. Frank Reich. Yeah, you love Frank Reich. And then in 2017, he was pressured on 40% of dropbacks. That's the sixth highest number in the league. So a better offensive line trying to find a silver lining for somebody. But Marlon Max breakout season goes out the window most likely. You're not on the goal line. You're not moving the football. Marlon Mack is the, the player that is the most single-handedly uh, – he has affected the largest because this is a player who's not the pass-catching back. This is a player who dominated in the games where he was winning. This, this was a player who, if you look at the game splits – in games where they won by wide margins, Mac dominated he did. because he was running out the clock. He had touchdown opportunities. He is a perfect back for an Andrew Luck-led Colts, and he's not a back that I would believe in as much without him. So, I mean, you know, he was almost a my guy. Whew, dodge that bullet. <laughs> well, you should have known. I mean, you, you, we all knew Andrew Luck was right. well, That's why I didn't saw go this with him. Yeah. Yeah, so, I, I mean, he's a guy that now is, like, RB30 for me. I'm not uh, – you know, it's – it's 
if you're drafting right now this week, ADP doesn't matter. You need to use the rankings. Like if you if you've got the ultimate draft kit and you're you know our rankings are now updated in that. Use those versus ADP for as to when should I take Marlon Mack because none of the ADP is going to make any sense in your home leagues. Do you expect any of these Colts to drop to the point where they are going to be draft day values? Look, there. I mean, you you both moved Hilton lower than I did. I have yes. like eighteen now. I moved to I moved him down. <clears throat> he he finished his year with. It was under a thousand, but he was almost there. However, when you look at how he got there, it was four huge games. Which great, Th those four weeks were spectacular. Yeah, you couldn't predict them. But you had to play him yeah. every single week to get those four weeks. The one player where I did nothing to his stat projection. There was a player in in 2017 who had a hundred and eight targets, eighty receptions. That was the man with those baby hands. Jack Doyle. It makes I know sense you that you shake. would find a way to make this good for Jack Doyle. I'm just saying, we we have we have we You're have saying Jacoby evidence. targets smaller handed men. Right. Maybe maybe that's what he's attracted to, or maybe it's that he just is like, ah, crap, right. Jack Doyle, take the ball. We are gonna circle there'll be ramifications for this Andrew Luck situation that go well beyond this show. Uh, we'll talk about it throughout the next couple of weeks and into the season. And I, look, I do want to throw out one one quick name. I know it's it's uh, it's deeper. It's in a dynasty league. First of all, if you're in a dynasty league, pick up Jacoby Brissett. Don't don't just let the Andrew Luck owner get him for free. Okay, Foot Clan, make it cost money or or get him for yourself. Uh, but if you're in a deep league and you got a trash bench, Chad Kelly is like Jacoby Brissett's a very good backup. But Chad Kelly, a name you might not be familiar with is a great quarterback who uh, I believe has the potential to be a great quarterback who has been just a terrible human being and or it has let's just say he's had poor decisions sure and so he's sure. you know so you want them to make a frequent poor decision you want them to make the good decision to put him on their dynasty well, roster. you know it's up to you but you, take take a little peek ski all right we'll, we'll circle back to this quick question before we get to that, I do want to uh, and give it up for St. Jude. Woo! This entire... We're very, very proud to be partnering with St. Jude Children's Research Hospital throughout this entire tour. Um, all of our proceeds from this event here in Phoenix are going straight to St. Jude. Uh, they've been an incredible partner. You guys know a dollar from every ultimate draft gets straight to St. Jude, so appreciate their support. Um, we're proud to be partners, and then we want to thank Pristine Auction. They've sponsored this tour as well, and they've been great partners. We're giving away this autographed David Johnson helmet at the end of this show. And he, he looked pretty good today. Yeah, it's looking up. It's looking good. Yeah, did you swing the pendulum back a little no. bit? No, I kept him where he was, but he's still top five. All right, here's what... Six, I don't know. We're going back to the well on this quick question. We asked it here last year. Best player analogy for 2019. It's that simple. Your, your best play Last year, I compared Sam Bradford to you. Yeah. And I... You nailed it. <laughs> Whoa, hey. <laughs> but listen, I respect you. I'm not going back to that well. I'm not going to do that again. And obviously, Joy Bell retired, so I don't have a player comp. That fits. Oh, 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 oh. Come on, man. CJ Anderson's still out there. I compared him to a professional running back. But what's your player analogy, Mike? All right. I'll set the table here first. Uh, how many uh, the guys out? How many are fathers out here? How many dads do we got in the crowd? So most of you also have dads as well. Like that's that's kind of how it works. But here's the thing. Yes. You're talking to me. I haven't hit it yet personally, but there's a day in every father's life where he loses in arm wrestling to his son. And that day you go, oh, <laughs> you got me this time, son. You, you tussle his hair. <laughs> you, you say how proud you are of the man he's becoming. But in your heart, you think that was once. That was just, that was just a one-off. But then it starts to eat you inside. And, you, and then... 
jokingly. What if it's not? <laughs> no, but you jokingly, oh, well, son, we got a rematch because that was garbage. I was on five hours of sleep, blah, blah. Let's go. And then you arm wrestle and you lose again. And then you bring up something else. You say, let's race. And you lose the race because once you have lost to your son, you never win again. <laughs> You're going in different directions on the aging scale. As the father, you may say, I just got this awesome new job, and now I'm wake making way more money than you, but it doesn't matter because you're not going to score more fantasy points because your son is James Conner, and the father is Le'Veon Bell, who has been surpassed by his son, James Conner. I like it. I like it. I don't, I don't know if all three of us agree, <laughs> but I agree. I like it. Look, I think you James do. Connor is a great option. I just like that despite the fact they're on different teams now, you still are pitting them firmly against one another. You I know, know you're on Bell's Team looking Connor. back. Yeah. You know. You, you think that, Le'Veon Bell's not going to look at every single oh. box score of James Connor? He probably will do you're that. You're darn yes. right he is. And, go, and bring it. He's going to bring it to Adam Gase and say, uh, James Conner got seven targets this week. I got mm -hmm. three. What's going on here? All right, so I'm going to bring up another uh, former Steeler. And I'm going to say yeah, that... Yeah, take that! I'm going to say... Remember that Super Bowl? <laughs> that <laughs> now will get now you. Now who's laughing? <laughs> Antonio Brown is the Wizard of Oz. Because... Look, Wait, hold on. The Wizard? He is the Wizard. Okay. In the Wizard of Oz, <laughs> he's the Wizard <laughs> of <I> Oz. <laughs> here's here's how he's the Wizard hold of on, Oz. Hold on, hold on. Okay, let, let's just make sure, just to make sure you get it. Antonio Brown, right? Wizard, insane. Oz, but in Oz. Got all right, we're there. Proceed. So Antonio Brown, the Wizard of Oz. Here's how. You've all seen the movie, The Wizard of Oz. This unbelievably powerful. <laughs> you know someone hasn't Spoiler seen The Wizard yeah. of Oz. If you haven't seen The Wizard of Oz. What's wrong with you? The, yes, you, you, you need to do a little, a little update <laughs> on your uh, movie watching time. So The Wizard is this all-powerful, unbelievable being of, uh, uh, you know, of magic that can grant any wish. And they, they're all, they're, I mean, he's just so good. Just like Antonio Brown, right? The number one wide receiver in football for so long. He's the best. But then eventually we get to look inside the curtain and he's a crazy person. <laughs> you peel back the curtain and you go, oh, this dude's just some maniac pulling levers, going nuts, talking out of his butt. That's riding Antonio. around in a hot air balloon. Just riding around in a hot air balloon. <laughs> Making crazy demands, right? Like, you bring me that witch's broomstick. You give me my old helmet. <laughs> but here's the thing. Here's the thing for fantasy. In the end, even though the wizard was a crazy person, he look, he got the job done. <laughs> Dorothy got home. The lion got his courage. Tin Man has a heart, and the Scarecrow had a brain. I think Antonio Brown is a crazy person that's going to be just fine for fantasy <laughs> football. He's going to get the job done. If he's dropping your third round, scoop him up. That went from me thinking you were out on him to it coming all the way back around. <laughs> wow. Well, I mean, fantasy-wise, he's, he's okay. He's a very talented crazy person. <laughs> he's a very talented so, crazy person. Just like the Just wizard. Like, <laughs> Nothing to see here. All right. Well, that was incredible. You I won't be able to second, Andy. I won't be able to follow it, but we're, we're out here in Arizona. How'd it feel outside today? <laughs> Felt like Adam Gase outside. Whoa! Not safe for work, bro. Not nice outside. If you're in Arizona, you spend five seconds outside, much less work out there, go for a walk, walk to your car from... <laughs> the mall whatever you do in arizona it's hot you're thirsty you're parched you need a drink you turn to your friend you say hey toss me a refreshment aaron jones is a frozen water bottle <laughs> okay it should be good you know what it can do you know that you want that thirst quenched you want that refreshment for your fantasy team but you can't do anything with it. 
maybe you wait a little while. Ah, 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 maybe ah. you wait and you get a couple drops. Week two, week five, a couple drops here and there. Unlike my colleague, I don't find it a uh, point in his favor that he's playing on the team that ran the ball the least of every team in football. And Matt LaFleur is supposed to be the savior, except for he, he's historically run the least amount of plays of any team in football over the last couple of years. I love Aaron Jones. I know the refreshment he could be for my fantasy team, but I'm afraid I'm not going to get it very often here and there. But that's why I think he's a frozen water bottle. Here's the thing about the frozen water bottle. Halfway through the day in Arizona, that's you're, now a refreshing water bottle. You're dead already. You're dead. You're dead. <laughs> you're dead. <laughs> All right, let's get into the rest of the news. News and notes from around the league presented by Sleeper. I mean, Foot Clan, we're with you on this Andrew Luck situation. All this breaking news. We knew six games tonight. We came in thinking that the headline was carry on Johnson lost his center for a couple of weeks mm -hmm. for recent news. I don't normally have my phone out. I've got to have my phone out today because what else is going to happen? Who knows what's going to happen? Um, Lamar Miller. Yeah, in previous top headlines. Yeah. Lamar Miller carded from Saturday's preseason game against the Cowboys. Left leg injury. Some of you have seen the replay. Some haven't. I wouldn't watch it. It's bad. It's not good. All indications, uh, Adam Schefter came out, tweeted, it looks, they believe ACL tear. There are people that drafted Andrew Luck and Lamar Miller today. Oh, oh. And oh. that's why we say draft as late as possible. Yeah, I mean, in your draft, go ahead and wait till after week three of preseason to do your drafting. But here we are, Lamar Miller, likely gone for the season. Houston, favorites in the division, even more so now. And what do we do? They have Duke Johnson. They, they have. They're uh, lucky. Dot dot dot. Yes. Oh. <laughs> there, just so for the people at home listening, the Phoenix crowd are just yelling names of whoever they want to go to Houston. <laughs> Melvin Gordon, Carlos Hyde, Sean McCoy. Someone yelled Andrew Luck. Adrian Peterson should be out. <laughs> Andrew Luck. They should just go get Marlon Mack because he's Here's not doing the thing. anything. Here's the thing. Duke Johnson's a pretty good running back. Yes. Him holding up, them turning the reins over to him permanently doesn't seem likely. But today, people are drafting. People are thinking about what Duke Johnson is for the rest of the season. I had a couple leagues where I took him with, you know, last round pick, second to last round pick. Almost dropped him for somebody else. But now what is he for fantasy owners? And do you expect them to bring another name in like a Jay Ajayi? They have to. They, they have to. Duke Johnson is not... A big enough back but to But what carry about Josh Ferguson? That load. Josh Ferguson. What about Buddy Howell? <laughs> yes. Just like Buddy Howell. If you thought we weren't going to do that, you don't know the show very well. Um, yeah, exactly. Oh, oh. Sorry. Um, yeah, look, and Mary Tyler Moore is not getting it done either. <laughs> so the, the reality is they have to bring someone in. Now, are they going to be able to trade for an Adrian Peterson? Everyone wants him to go get Melvin Gordon. Yes, that would be delightful. That would be awesome. The more that I think about it, I can't imagine that happening. They don't have a GM. They can make a trade like they traded for Duke Johnson. You call Bill up. But, you That's know, what you do. You call Bill and you say, hey, Bill. Well, you get Sexy Rexy? No, Bill O'Brien. Oh. He's the GM. He's, he's yeah, he is the GM. He worked the Duke Johnson trade. Right, but but that they didn't have to restructure a contract. Sure. And right now, Melvin Gordon's contract is eh, it's not been easy or going well to restructure. So I can't imagine them getting a, the deal done without a GM um, f for Melvin Gordon. But I do think they have to bring someone in. Jay Ajayi. So uh, when I look at Duke Johnson, he's someone you have to pick up. You have to draft if he's, if he's falling. Right now, he looks valuable. But I do temper my expectations because I think – he can't be a guy that comes out and gets 230 carries. Well, he's I, he's never had more than 104 carries, and that was his rookie season. He's never had more than 
379 rushing yards. Now, that that doesn't say that Duke Johnson can't do it. Sure, look at Damian Williams. Exactly. It just says th- that combined with their depth chart, they are they have to make a move. As as a contending team, that their, their goal is the Super Bowl. Their goal is not, we hope we win the division. Their goal is to win the Super Bowl. They have to add a they, running back to this I'm team. They miss... <laughs> I'll be, I'll just, I'll, I'll they miss that. Alfred Blue. Oh, said no one ever. <laughs> That's the most likely outcome is somebody like Alfred. I mean, Carlos Hyde, D- uh, Darwin I, Thompson, Daryl Williams, Damian Williams, all played ahead of him tonight. Yeah, Carlos Hyde's not He's making probably not going to make the roster. It, That's not, the kind of player that's going to come in and screw up high hopes for Duke Johnson with, I mean, they're, they're willing to give Alfred Blue the ball. But, but in, even still in with past, that, as like – Right now, so this is Saturday night. Monday, it could be a way different thing. But right now, if I'm drafting tonight, I'm willing to take the seventh round gamble on what Duke Johnson could be. I mean, we also know that pass catching is in his profile. Not that Deshaun Watson has historically passed to the running back very much, but we know that Cam Newton didn't pass to the running back very much till he had a guy who was fantastic at that. He had that skill set. So I'm still going to take the gamble of what Duke Johnson could be, even though I, in in my heart, I believe that Carlos Hyde, Shady McCoy, Jay Ajayi, one of those guys is going to come in and kind of rain on the parade. All right, uh, we will talk more preseason thoughts from week three, uh, the remainder of the games, some takeaways on our next show. Two quick ones, though. I might as well hit this. Uh, Didi Westbrook, John DiFilippo. The best route runner he's ever been around, oh, Mike. Oh, stop, John. Just stop. Does it feel like he's actually complimenting you, Mike? A little bit. Yeah. A little bit it does. It, the so timing the, of the breakout of D.D. Westbrook in that preseason game, they were something special. Still feel very good about D.D. Westbrook. Yes, yes, I feel very confident that D.D. Westbrook is going to be a PPR machine. Frank Gore rushed eight times for 57 he yards. He is infinite. He is all. He is Gore. He is <laughs> Gore. I mean, dude's dude is fifty years old, playing running back. And here's what's crazy: you know who you doesn't th- lose that arm wrestling match? Yeah, Frank Gore's <laughs> never Frank loses. Gore. Son. Frank Gore never <laughs> loses. He, if you didn't see the preseason game, he had this he breakaway run. He looked great. He goes out of bounds. Another defender comes in. Illegal flagged shot. Murders his knee. Just looks exactly like Lamar Miller. The the foot is kind of planted in the in the turf, and he has to go off. He's injured. Five minutes later, he's back there looking like a beast. Of course he is. At fifty, because he, he has the Infinity Stones. He's rubbed it on his knee, and he's good to go. But it, it does. Is br- it, but but it does bring up the points. Wise, yeah, is Frank points. Gore rosterable? No, I don't think Frank Gore is rosterable. But it does say that. Shady is looking very good. He is the clear back. Frank Gore appears to be the secondary option, which just throws a little bit of cold water for this season for redraft leagues on Devin Singletary breaking into fantasy relevance. Fair enough. Yep. Same thoughts. All right. Yes. That was uh, today's news and notes brought to you as always by the sleeper app, which was almost completely destroyed by the it. Andrew Luck news. You better have the sleeper app. Hey, Foot Clan, we want to thank longtime supporter and sponsor and maker of awesome razors, Harry's, for helping support the show. A lot of guys are traveling this summer and you're buying disposable razors. But look, you don't have to sacrifice quality for price. You can join the 10 million who have traveled and tried Harry's. Harry's delivers high quality travel friendly shave supplies at a great low price. Just two dollars per blade they literally bought a factory in germany just to make sure that they can manufacture at a great price with a great blade this summer refresh your wallet and your face with a harry's trial set it comes with a weighted ergonomic handle for an easy grip five blade razor with a lubricating strip and trimmer blade for a close shave rich lathering shave gel that will leave you smelling great and a travel blade cover to help keep your razor dry and easy on the go. Listeners can redeem your trial set at harrys.com slash footballer. Make sure you go to harrys.com slash footballer to redeem your offer and let them know that we sent you to help support the show. Foot Clan would like to thank today's sponsor, Quip. 
toothbrushes. I have had a Quip toothbrush now for many, many moons, and I love it. I'd never leave my house when I'm going on a trip. I always grab the Quip because when you go on a trip, you got to get the, that, gotta gotta get get that Quip. Quip. Look, it's got timed sonic vibrations over an effective clean that's gentle on your sensitive gums in just two minutes, twice a day. They got a multi-use cover that works as a stand. It mounts to the mirror. I got my thing up on my mirror, my Quip. It's great. It's out of the way, looking nice. And the lightweight, compact design means you can bring it along for, uh, with you on those last summer weekend getaways. And brush heads are automatically delivered on a dentist-recommended schedule every three months for just 5 bucks, making it easy to stay committed to your oral health. That's why I love Quip and why it's perfect for getting back into a routine. Quip starts at just $25. And if you go to getquip.com slash footballers right now, you can get your first refill pack for free. That's your first refill pack free at G-E-T-Q-U-I-P dot com slash footballers. And now back to the show. But without further ado, our main segment. Ridiculously Bold Predictions. Now, when, when we say bold predictions, thank you. Thank you. I'm a little sad that Brooks didn't, like, fly across the stage. Oh, we got to rig him up for the next live show. <laughs> like a Peter Pan at a, at a theater show. Just have him <laughs> crash. This no. court's out of order. Now, bold predictions, that means they're guaranteed to come true, right? Oh, yeah. Well, of that's, course. That's what makes them so bold. That's why they will be reflected perfectly in our rankings. <laughs> we'll get there, sir. <laughs> All right, who wants to go first with a, a ridiculously bold prediction for uh, 2019? I think the beginning of the end should start at well, the beginning. We'll we'll get there round two, but I'll kick it off. Oh, okay. I'll kick it off. Here we go. Juju Smith Schuster. A star has been born, and he's going supernova. That, well, just in a cool way, not in like a literal way. <laughs> Not the scientific way. Not in the way. scientific way, because that would be like the end. But here's the thing. Juju Smith-Schuster finishes this season as the number one wide receiver in fantasy football. I See, here's the thing. I was asking, weeks ago, I was asking people, like, can I even do that? Because I Is don't that even, even legal? I don't even feel like it's spicy. Like, he has <laughs> such good odds of finishing at the number one wide receiver position. Here's how <laughs> Not I so much that. Vegas odds. I feel like when he was based on the around, yardage numbers that I saw. He was like doing an Alex Rodriguez with the mirror. Like, is this a spicy take, Jason? No. No. And then he gave himself a smooch. Yeah, you're darn right. High five and a little kiss on the mirror. <laughs> Every morning, that's my routine. <laughs> um, here's the thing. Oh, First of all, there's a couple of reasons why I believe this. He has a quarterback that can do it. He has the targets, the touchdowns. Those three reasons are why he's going to be able to do it. Look at Big Ben. Big Ben, over the last six seasons, five seasons, has averaged 4,800 yards and 32 touchdowns. That's his 16-game pace over the last half decade. Now, Antonio Brown is gone and crazy. He's gone. <laughs> but remember his fantasy finishes. Four two, three, these are his ranks on the season, one, one, that means first, <laughs> six. Like, he is, obviously, everyone talks about Antonio Brown as the goat of this last decade. He is great. And I'm not trying to take anything away from Brown, but I am saying that Ben Roethlisberger factually can support a talented wide receiver to become the number one. We know that without, like, that's not up for debate. He's done it twice and every year a top six option. So he's already got the quarterback in tow that can focus on him. Uh, then you look at touchdowns, and this is really what it comes down to for me. You, If you want to finish at number one in wide receiver, you have to have double-digit touchdowns. In fact, you're talking about 12.6 touchdowns per season over the last five years. Tyreek Hill, 2018, 12 touchdowns. Hopkins, 13 touchdowns. Jordy, 14 touchdowns. Antonio Brown, twice, 10 and 13. And Demarius Thomas, 
14 touchdowns. I miss you, Demarius. Yeah, I know, right? You have to score a bunch of touchdowns. So who can get that high? Who out there? Obviously, Hopkins can do it. Devontae Adams can do it. Yeah. Tyreek Hill can do it. Mm -hmm. Beckham. Evans. Beckham might. Evans can get up there with, yeah. with, with touchdowns. But, but Julio, probably not. Michael Thomas, probably not. Antonio Brown with Derek Carr, probably not. Obviously, Juju could because of Big Ben. Juju had seven touchdowns last year and was tackled within the two-yard line five times. I mean, that's already 12, and now you have 15 vacated touchdowns from Antonio Brown. But I get it. You're like, well, he can't go up. Oh, yeah! Is that the Vance dance? Yeah, the vacated touchdowns made me think of Vance. I love it. I love it. He'll get his, too. I'm not saying he gets 15 more sure. touchdowns to Juju. but Why not? But it's the bold prediction show, He gets Jason. 22 total touchdowns. You heard it here first. Uh, no, I know for a fact. I've been around uh, you far too often. I've heard this percolating in you for months yeah. where you just believe that Juju could end up number one. He's, Which is not something that I believe. He's super delicious. He's super talented. Super delicious. He is super talented. Uh, you know, and, and the thing is, is you go, well, he can't go up from last year. He had 166 targets. Where is it going to go? Well, Antonio Brown over the last five years averaged 181 target pace. So I, I see you wrote in here. So, yes, he can. <laughs> Thank you, Andy. Was that I just to wanted me? to make you that say that was it. to me. Now you fell into the trap. You said yes, he can. Don't forget to say yes, he can. Yeah. That's right. So, yes, Juju Smith-Schuster, <laughs> 2019 wide receiver, number one in okay, fantasy Okay, Mike, you're up. Oh, all right. Austin Eckler finishes 2019 as a top 12 running back. Yes, yes, someone drafted Austin Eckler, and we're on the same team. We all know the situation for Austin Eckler. Melvin Gordon, he's a little bit disgruntled. And here's the, we, we don't know for sure how long can Melvin Gordon hold out contractually. It might be eight games, it might be ten games. Let's say that he holds out ten games. The Los Angeles Chargers, at that point, maybe they're in the playoff hunt, maybe they aren't. But maybe a player comes back, and even though he can help the team, the team says, screw you, you aren't coming back as the starting running back. You are now behind our starting running back, That's Austin official Eckler. legalese. <clears throat> That's what they would put in the document. I'm just taking the stroll down Narrative Street, man. Yes. The storefronts are lovely. You should join me every once in a while. <laughs> Austin Eckler is a good player. Great pass catcher. Second in yards after the catch last year. Third in yards per reception. Fifth in yards per target. Can the, can the team, like that, that's the worry. Oh, if, if Melvin Gordon's gone, the Los Angeles Chargers, they're not good. Okay, uh, games with Gordon, they averaged 27 points a game. How many points did they average in the four games that Gordon missed? 27 points. Similar the, number. The offense was fine. <laughs> Games without Gordon, including the, uh, when Gordon went down with the injury. Eckler averaged 7.75 targets a game. Almost 8 targets a game. 11 carries. You're talking 19 opportunities a game for Austin Eckler. He scored a rushing touchdown in two of those four games where Melvin Gordon was gone. Austin Eckler is the starting running back for this team. Sure, it could shake out that Justin Jackson eats in, and now it's a 50-50 timeshare. You're not but, banking on Eckler scoring anyway, right? I mean, that's not I the, am. Well, I mean, that's not the key to I mean, the pass-catching volume. The touches yes. for Eckler are far more important. You're not looking at him like LeGarrette Blunt has to fall into the end zone to get value. Right. It, I've, I, we just did our top 10 tips and tricks, and I, talk, I, I highlighted top 10 running backs. Target. They always have 50 or more receptions, and there's usually two wild cards who sneak in. Austin Eckler fits that bill. He, if, if Melvin Gordon is gone for the majority of the season, he will easily, easily see more than 50 receptions. And it's not like this team with Phillip Rivers hasn't seen a small running back, a small stature guy, yeah. have success. You remember Danny Woodhead? Oh, who was, the who Hearthstone. Just, he just, yeah, the original. The original Hearthstone. Who just, at the end of the year, just kept popping up as a running back one, and each year you go, well, why is Danny Woodhead here? Austin Eckler could be the new Danny Woodhead. There are always a couple every year. James White, Tariq Cohen, 
Last year, Eckler with Gordon, seven games inside the top 24. It's interesting. And it, the weird thing is, is if Keenan Allen, I mean, right now we think he's fine. People right. are drafting him like he's fine. But if that injury cropped up, you already lost Tyrell. Mike Williams isn't necessarily a volume type of receiver. No more Antonio Gates. It's interesting. Then Eckler's seeing I mean, 10 targets again. Bold. Probably wrong, but very interesting. <laughs> probably We're wrong. here to be probably bold, wrong. but yes. it is spicy and I love it. All right, I'll give you mine. Um, the Atlanta Falcons will have a player finish inside the top 12 at every single fantasy football position. In 2017, there were two teams that did it. Last year, two teams did it. It was Kansas City. It was Pittsburgh, right? Correct. Shout, so out, I've, shout I've, out to Big Ben again. Yeah, oh, yeah. I've heard um, this prediction before. Yeah, because you made it on this show last year, but you picked the wrong team. You're picking you the did right. more of like an 0 for 4. <laughs> yes. But the Falcons, I don't think anybody debates the merits of Matt Ryan being in the top 12. Get I'm just saying, I I, I, I do not stand for I your Matt Ryan. Ugh. 12 of 16 weeks last year, Matt Ryan was in the top 12 finish on that week alone. I'm told that's good. Yeah, that's pretty decent because he finished the year at the top of the position. So I'm, I don't want to get into it. We don't got time for it. Sure. Go, you, you we'll talk. deal with it in counseling. Mm -hmm. um, Julio Jones, you want to debate that one too? No, no, no. He's, he's okay. going to be in. So then you're really talking about... Um, Devonta Freeman, who's being drafted at RB15 right now, climbing into the top 12. You have to bank on health with Devonta Freeman, which is not... You don't really want to have to do that. But the last two times he had full 16-game seasons, he was well within that range. He was at 13, RB13, when he played a shortened uh, 2017 season. 14 games, still finished at RB13. The competition behind Devonta Freeman is... It's almost as bad as it is behind Duke Johnson. It's as we, bad as Ito Smith. And we, I know you're not going to argue it. No, no. We're, we are, with these three, we're in lockstep. Now the player... Then Here's the, where it gets... Yeah. Now you have to talk about Austin Hooper. No! Which is not fun to talk about. No! When Austin Hooper wakes up in the morning, he goes into his bathroom, and there's a picture of Jason Witten in the corner of the mirror. <laughs> and that's a great aspiration, right? Today, Witten. Today's today. the day. It's crazy. Austin Hooper has been really, really Jason Whitney, as in fine, as in does enough throughout the season on a consistent basis to just kind of find himself in that top range. He actually has the best reception percentage of any tight end in football since the start of 2016, believe no. it or not. 77% of the balls thrown his way, he catches them. Uh, last year, he had six weeks where he finished inside the top seven at the tight end position. So it's never been sexy to play Austin Hooper, and it never will be, just like Jason Witten. But I think he could climb his way in, so that's why I think the Falcons could have four of them in the top 12. I think that's good. All right, now let's talk about a great prediction gone wrong. This would be my, my prediction last year, the beginning of the end for the New England Patriots. <laughs> Uh, I apologize, I apologize. The beginning of the end for the Super Bowl champion New England Patriots last year. So, uh, they did. They, they are the Super Bowl champions. So, here's the thing uh, as to why I say it's great. It's a, it's a great call. Okay? I, here, I, I remember when, the victory lap. I remember when you, Jason Moore, said that. Yes. So, here's the thing. The reason this whole thing started, every year I predict my fantasy team that I think is overdrafted and is going to bust for fantasy. In 2016, it was the Carolina Panthers. Cam and Calvin Benjamin were going way too high. They both failed on the season. In 2017, Terrell Pryor, the Washington Redskins, you had Terrell Pryor, Jordan Reed, Jamison Crowder, Rob <laughs> Kelly, all going six round and, and ahead, and they pretty much all busted that year. Last year was the Patriots, and because it was the Patriots, I took the narrative street that is the beginning of the end. Whoops! <laughs> but for fantasy, Gronk was in the second, Hogan was in the fourth, Josh Gordon was in the fourth, Brady was in the fifth, and Rex Burkhead was in the sixth. They busted. They were not good. So for fantasy, the bold prediction of you don't want to draft these players was right. And so my team this year, you will not like what I have to say. You are correct. I don't like it. People love this team. And I'm going to take a dump on it. 
the Cleveland Browns. So sorry, everyone's new sweetheart. But look, Andy, you said, you said, right, the last couple years, there's only been two teams that have had a quarterback, a running back, a wide receiver, a tight end finish in as a one. Well, that the Cleveland Browns right now are being drafted that way. I mean, in Joku, Baker, Chubb, and Beckham, they're all being drafted to finish as a one. Now, is the Cleveland Browns, if for them to return value, the only way that they return value is that they are gr- a great offense. And now, I'm not saying they can't be a great offense. Like, I love Baker. This hurts me because Baker's just... Dude, I want Baker would be such a cool best friend. Yo, yes, he would. I mean, I'm on Team Baker. But Baker's being drafted as the fourth quarterback. He has not proven anything yet. Odell Beckham is on a new team. And when I was going through the top ten uh, tips and tricks lists about avoiding risk in the first round, I realized that the last two years, the same guy's being drafted in the first round that's busted both years. It was Odell Beckham. He has not been a model of health. He's played fewer games than Sammy Watkins, and they were drafted in the same year. Nick Chubb is a great talent. He looks unbelievable. Kareem Hunt is coming back this season, and he he played half of last season, and he was the running back 11. I'm just saying there's a lot more risk. Like, I, they are the sexy team. They are the anti-Austin Hooper. Like, everyone wants to get on board with the coolness of Baker, myself included. But as a fantasy analyst, I go, they haven't done it yet. They have a head coach that's unproven. They have an organization that is historically mismanaged. They have a tough division. They have a tough division. Thank you. So I'm just saying, I think the, the Browns are my, like, they're overpriced. They're beginning so, of the end. So just so you're aware, <laughs> figure out the Super Bowl bets right, right. now and just they might throw win the Super it all Bowl. on the Browns. Because maybe they'll win the Super Bowl if, and you'll be right. If they win the Super Bowl, just wait for next year's <laughs> team and bet big. Bet the Cardinals over and over yes. for my sake. Speak, All right. Speaking two more of, and then we're going to do our uh, live mailbag. Speaking of Cardinals, we're in Phoenix, Arizona. Three... <laughs> You should probably let me finish. <laughs> we are three children of of the Valley of the Sun. Yes. We are diehard Arizona Cardinal fans. We Sir wear Charles it, for life. We wear it on our sleeve. Uh, I know that uh, there, there's some other jerseys sprinkled throughout here, but yes. you heard it. We are mostly in Arizona Cardinal country. We're very excited. We're very excited for the Arizona Cardinals. We're not going to win the Super Bowl this year. I'm sorry to break it to everybody, and I have to preface my bold prediction with that because it kind of will hurt. It, it's, uh, it's interdivisional. Cooper Cup is going to lead the league in touchdown receptions this year. <laughs> Cooper Cup has only played in 23 of the possible 32 games that he has been in or, uh, since he's been in the league, and in that time, he has the seventh most red zone receptions, that he is 10th in broken tackles, and he is 6th in yards after catch of qualified wide receivers. Cooper Cup is really freaking good. Last year, he basically played full snaps in five games. Five. He was on pace to score 12 touchdowns. In the, he is, he's on an unbelievable offense. He is the primary red zone option. In the last two years... Jared Goff has thrown 46 touchdowns in the red zone. That's the most in the league. Five and a half red zone attempts per game for Jared Goff. That's right there with Tom Brady, Andrew Luck. R.I.P. R.I.P. Yes. <laughs> Rest in peace. And Patrick Mahomes. Still so crazy. It's, it's real fresh. <laughs> but here we are. We have to move on. Cooper Cup, it's... Like, I, it's crazy yeah. for me to be endorsing this player who's coming off of an ACL tear. But 2019 is apparently just a wild year with Andrew Luck retiring, Emmanuel Sanders returning from an injury that nobody returns from, and Cooper Cup entered training camp, all systems go, and has looked nothing but spectacular in camp. Todd Gurley has 46 touchdowns in the last four years for the Rams, including 17 last year. 13 the year prior. 
if you believe in an adjustment to the offensive philosophy for his health sake, then maybe you turn to Cup, Everett. You know, Cook's around the goal line, not necessarily a target. Right. So it's interesting, exceptionally spicy. The ACL tear has people afraid. You get Jake Glazer coming out and saying he looks better than ever before, which I have not normally said about an ACL tear, so it's interesting. How confident are you? Well, it's the ball take show, I know. so I'm like super confident. <laughs> Unbelievably confident. Number one in your rankings, confident. Patriots, Got it. beginning of the end, confident. <laughs> one more. <laughs> Yeah, that's super confident. <laughs> um, Chris Carson ends the season as a top five fantasy football running back. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. A lot of cheers for Chris Carson. Some boos. Okay. People, people were like, yeah, you know, we're kind of on board with Cooper Cup, but running back in the division, yeah. So when I look at Chris Carson. Bunch of fair weather I'm, fans. There are two players that I'm just – Insane excited about this year. Chris Carson's one of them. Sonny Michelle's the other one. And now you can take them both at like third and fourth round in a lot of leagues. So if you wanted to go wide receiver, wide receiver, you could. Is it a leap to say that Chris Carson could be a top five running back over the course of the season? Last year, number seven in the league in total rushing attempts on the season despite missing two games on the season. Number five in rushing yardage for the whole season and all this speculation about what if? What if he catches more passes? He seems to have a clear lead on Rashad Penny that has only grown over the course of uh, this entire preseason from week 11 on last year. So seven full games to end the season. He averaged 19.4 carries a game on a team that runs more than anybody else. Your eyebrows, Mike, they just rose. That's a lot of carries. 93 yards a game. That's a 311 carry pace. Oh. That's a 1,495 rushing yard pace. That's a 16 touchdown pace. He was the number four running back in that span behind like Saquon McCaffrey and then the great, wonderful Derrick Henry <laughs> to end the year. So multiple times last year and this season where he did that, he wasn't even targeted at all. I mean, there were five different games that he played in where he had a lot of carries, never even got targeted. But he's got the best hands... On the but team, yeah, apparently. I mean, the, the reports around that, all you need to do is pepper in one or two more targets, give him that kind of workload. You know what that team wants to do. So it's bold because he's being drafted as the RB18 right now by fantasy owners, but I think he finishes top five. How is uh, DK Met Metcalf doing right now? Poorly. How is David Moore doing right now? Poorly. Mm. Mm. They're going to need to throw to someone other than Tyler Lockett. So I, I like this. And it was I weird it's... to me, Andy. So you gave the – the from week 11 on, it was a decent enough sample size. And his post, pace – Post buy. Right. It was a pace of 311. But if you actually look at it, it was week three when he took over yeah, he didn't as even... the carry count. If you go from week three on, which is pretty much a season sample size, he was still a 312 carry pace. He's going to get an enormous amount of work. It's just a matter of will he be involved in the passing game if he and, is and stay healthy. But that's a requirement well, right. for anybody to finish in the top five. You've got to stay healthy. So I think that rounds out the bold predictions. I think we're going to get into the mailbag. I hope you're going to bring it. We're going to get the microphone set up. Warm the voices up. Final one of the year, Phoenix. Final mailbag drop of the year, Phoenix. I don't know how prepared they are. Did you hear him? Get the lights. It's the Get final the mailbag of the Get year. Some house lights. Thank you. There are no house lights. Okay. <laughs> All right. Someone call the fire marshal. You guys ready? Here we go. Mailbag. Well, that was just done. a calm before the storm. That was Acceptable. pretty good. First question. All right, let's jump into the mailbag. Oh, what a shirt. Give, give us hey. your name. What's up, guy? John Speaking Styles. Speaking the mic. Talking the mic. John, yep. John lift, Styles. Lift the mic up just a little bit. Let's do it like that. What's your name, buddy? John Styles. John All right, Styles. what's up, John? Okay. So nice to meet you. Oh, right. Likewise. Uh, so uh, we uh, in my draft, it's .04 point per yard. And so okay. how I was trying to see how should I uh, how does that affect my rankings? How should, going to my draft tomorrow. 
point zero four point per yard. Are you talking about receiving and rushing? Or are you talking about quarterbacks? Uh, quarterbacks. quarterbacks. It's point zero four point per yard. Point zero four point per yard. It doesn't change anything. Like we, we get the question. Oh, quarterbacks get twenty five well, points. Well, like, yeah, it, well, it doesn't change how you think of when you draft okay, a quarterback. Is what you're saying. Yes. It does realign quarterbacks. Sure, but it like. It's, oh, we get a point per completion. It just changes out who's at the top. It's not going to change your strategy because every single quarterback is going to drop back and they're going to throw the ball 20 to 25 times. I mean, that's why the streaming of the position is so viable. That's why every year over 40 quarterbacks hit a quarterback one week. And, and it's not like it's, what? Whoa, I never saw that coming. It's no, the backup is at home and he's playing against a garbage defense. We can all see it coming a mile away. Well, fantasy players, we, like NFL people out there, they're always shocked that these backup quarterbacks put up numbers. Meanwhile, fantasy players, like, yeah, because that's what they always do. So it, it might change out. Uh, Give me Matt like, Ryan. It, it, I was going to say, <laughs> Matt Ryan, Big Ben, it does change kind of the variance because quarterbacks, you know, you talk about Matt Ryan bouncing oh. back and forth. That's because of touchdowns, not because of yardage. Hundred percent. What eight straight years of four thousand yards or whatever he has? Yeah, so, you just rearrange the yeah. quarterbacks to focus on those that have a lot of passing. Or do you, Mr. Styles? Uh oh. Do you have an ultimate draft? Shameless yet? plug. Of course. Well, of then course. there you go, dude. Of just course. plug in your scoring system into the UDK, oh. and then we'll, we'll organize it for you. Gotcha. <laughs> Next problem solved. Thank you, sir. Thanks your name is amazing. Hi guys. How's hey, it going? Hey. Hi, I'm Linda Neville. Um, nice to meet you, Linda. I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> my question is, on my Harry Potter League, nice. due to a series of unfortunate circumstances, uh. my first pick was number 24. <laughs> what? So, the this, sorting hat hates it you. It was the sorting, yes, yes. <laughs> 24! <laughs> so, is this a situation when you would pick a quarterback first, or what would your strategy be when that's your first pick? I, no, I, it actually pushes me the opposite direction if that's your first pick because you're now at a lower tier of running backs and they run out quick. So I'd be looking to get the core. I mean, I'd have to go late round for the quarterback in that yes. situation, yeah. right? Yeah, I mean, you've got to stack running backs and wide receivers as much as you can for as long as you can because you know that at the very end of the draft, you can take a Josh Allen at quarterback and you'll be fine. Don't waste an early pick because you don't have them. It just, I, it wouldn't change. I know. I guess I was. I was thinking you would say it wouldn't change it. It's just there was Mahomes, and all they had picked so far was running backs and wide receivers. You said and was. Kelsey. Has this already this happened? This is over. Yes. This is Did already. You so you have I'm Mahomes. I'm looking to see how badly I. You took failed. Mahomes. I do have Austin Eckler though. This thing. I got a okay, whole so bunch. Were you seeking I'm, approval? No. Oh, okay. So wait, well, hold on. I knew I failed after I had clicked on. Not it. necessarily, though. I, I, I'd be I, curious I understand. About <laughs> I understand it happening. He's you have Austin tears. Eckler. What are, What are your other running backs? Out of curiosity, in a league where you took Mahomes, one. I know I have D.D. Westbrook. I can't remember the, my whole list of. Um, sure. So you have Austin Eckler. Okay. I got a bunch of breakout picks from your kit. So I'm kind of excited about that. My son looked at it, thought it doesn't look too bad. So okay. Well, well I mean, honestly, I, I hope one of the breakout picks that you did get, yeah, which we just pulled tonight, was not Marlon Mack. No, <laughs> okay, not having Marlon Mack. <laughs> good. So, uh, by the way, it's it's awesome to have Patrick Mahomes. I think that gets yes. lost sure. in a sea of late round quarterback discussion. Yes. It's super cool. I had him last year in a bunch of leagues. I loved it. I was a big fan. The thing that gets, you know, having a great quarterback is what you want in fantasy. It just puts you in a position where you need to hit on the later draft picks more consistently. And because fantasy football is so so much variation, injury, and we set, we talk about stacking running backs, stacking wide receivers to protect against injury, to protect against variance, it just puts you in a position where you have to hit on them later. It doesn't mean that you failed the draft to have Patrick Mahomes. It means you got the best quarterback in football. Yeah. And, and Win the waiver wire. If I was in that position, the draft, that may or may not have happened. It could happen again. I'm, yeah. you know. In the the hypothetical and I'm, and I'm draft. That late. Honestly, I am, I'm stacking up wide receivers early because the wide receivers going in that range, they're going to produce. Maybe you, you hit on one or two of them and they jump into that elite category. But that the running backs later on – they gain value as the season goes along. You you just you see it happen because of injury. So I'm gonna 
because I don't have early picks, I'm going to take the more sure thing to know that I'm scoring points every week. And make okay, sure that the yeah. Tony Pollards, Justin Jacksons, that none of them are on the waiver wire right Matt now. Matt yes. right, right. Because you could you could scoop them up and have a starting running back week one. Right. right. Thank you so Thank much. You. You're, You're welcome. so welcome, Linda. Next question. <clears throat> oh, here, here comes a man-eater. <laughs> What's up? Yeah. For, for those can't, who can't, can't see, he's, that. he's wearing a Hall & Oates shirt. Oh, no. I thought that was something for just like really tall people were man eaters or something. I didn't know what that meant. I can't go for that. Uh, <laughs> the one Hall and Oates song he doesn't like, yeah. I referenced. I'm sorry. My question. How do you guys' families feel about fantasy football? Like, do you kids play it? Your wives play it? Do they well, like that, it? That's a great question because today. What timing? Today, both my boys who are here drafted their first up, boys? teams. They drafted their first teams. And much like Linda, I let them find their way through. <laughs> Aaron Rodgers in the first, Patrick Mahomes in the second for one of them. But, no, I mean, I, I think they've rallied around it. One of the things that we love about fantasy football is the fact that it can be very inclusive of the family if you make it that way. You know, when we started the show, it was about, hey, how do you not just win but have fun and create a league that's fun with great people, and that includes, like, not – running off to the basement to watch football while your family does something else. I right. mean, so it's been very fun for them. Obviously, I get paid to do fantasy, so it's changed my wife's perspective <laughs> from what it was before I did this. But, um, no, yeah, it's, my, it's been good for our family. My my wife, my children right now, they currently don't they don't participate. I don't think they, you know, my wife will never participate in fantasy football. So if you're out there and you're, you've got someone like that, I highly recommend starting a successful uh, fantasy football podcast <laughs> because, honey, I'm working. My my wife, I've convinced her one time to join a fantasy football league. I managed the crap out of that team. <laughs> How'd she do? <laughs> she did very well. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, Hall and Oates. Thank, Thank you, you very sir. Much. Next question. Hello, sir. State your name. Dan Kerber. Hey, Dan. What's up, so Dan? Nice How you doing? Nice to meet you, Dan. So nice to meet you guys. All right. My question is, what strategy adjustments do you make for a massive redraft tournament like the Mega Bowl? Oh! No, 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 no. Insider trading. <laughs> How do you think about a big tournament like that? You got to... You think... <laughs> you play to win. And by... When I say that, it sounds ridiculous, but you... Uh, I mean, you got to win your league, but then at the end you're going to have to be putting up so many points. And so I'll just give you one quick tip. We, we talk about on the show, we don't like handcuffing, number one, because it's unpredictable. There are some that are, though. Dalvin Cook. I'm fairly confident that Alexander Madison, Alexander Madison, will be his handcuff <laughs> if something were to happen to Dalvin Cook. If I draft Dalvin Cook in that league, I'm not drafting Alexander Madison. I'm drafting Chase Edmonds. I'm drafting... Malcolm Brown. I'm drafting guys that, if something works out against those players, now my team be transforms from great to incredible. You, ha you have to stack up those players that can really turn the, turn the nitro on halfway through the year. Yeah, and, and there's players like uh, Leonard Fournette, guys that, look, you always say they would be great if they stayed healthy, but that's why they're cheaper in the draft. Look, the only... Single person, what, I think we're up to 4,500 people in the Megala Bowl right now. Uh, you can get in at jointhefoot.com for another week. Um, but you've got – your team is going to be healthy. Like the winner's team, congratulations. Right. They drafted healthy players – and and they didn't deal with a bunch of wacky injuries in a in a like you can deal with that in a league of twelve. Mm -hmm. You can't deal with that in a league of forty five hundred. Yep. Fair enough. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Final question. Oh! I know what that means. Oh yeah. <laughs> do What's you, up, ballers? Do you know what that means? Yeah, that oh, means you want <laughs> well, what's, your, what's name? your name first? My name is Ricardo Arden. Hello, sir. Nice to meet you. Hi, Ricardo sir. is the winner of oh, the sign. Oh, David Johnson. Well, you teased it so soon. You didn't let us break the news. That's on you. That's not on me. 
Thank you to Pristine Oxen for I'm just for, happy he's not wearing a it. Seattle jersey like the last 10 things we've given away. Ricardo, what is your well, favorite NFL team? But before you talk, sir. Eagles. Oh, come on. <laughs> hey, hey, hold on. I love Hold Wentz on. and I love, love Miles Sanders. Remember when David Johnson broke out against the Eagles? That was pretty <laughs> freaking awesome. <laughs> it was so great. We've got a signed picture in our studio of that moment. Uh, but just a, a, a word of wisdom. Microphones pick up your mouth, so... You, the gum, you might want to hold that back. Oh! <laughs> uh, but your question's good, sir. So my question is, in regards to uh, preseason, which backfield has scared you the most? Oh, that's Ooh, scared question. us the most. That's a great question. Well, for me, Falcons. Uh, uh, no. Uh, well, Bob you talked about the offensive line. The offensive concerns. line scares yeah. me a lot. Uh, I actually think that's more towards Matt Ryan than Freeman. Freeman's a great pass catcher; he can leak out, um, and is a great pass protector. So he's going to be in. This is just selfish, purely, you know, blood pressure related. But it's the Lions, right? Like, I've got so much riding on this. I'm like, oh, no. Carry oh, yes. <laughs> I mean, I'm so invested in carry on Johnson. Uh, perfect example here. So, like, today, the news, you know, they, the, the Lions. Uh, had a preseason game. They had a preseason game. Played some football. And I saw a tweet that was talking about how Matthew Stafford was out there for 32 snaps and the snap breakdowns. Carry on Johnson had eight and C.J. Anderson was like 22, and Ty Johnson was out there a bunch. And so I'm like, oh, oh, oh crap. Honest to goodness, no joke. C.J. Anderson was almost my, uh, t today, the uh, the analogy. He was going to be beets, like the, the vegetable, because I hate them. Um, but but then I went and I watched the game, and what happened is... Uh, he doesn't know, eat beets. He was, no. early, he was early in... The, the game, he was first. He was in on a couple third downs. And then they pulled him. And he never got back on the field. So that's great news. But that one's been stressing me out. I've been worried. What about you guys? Well, Tampa Bay's backfield looks atrocious. <laughs> I mean, we were watching the game the other day, and it was like, okay, if, if a player lost three yards on the carry, it meant it was Peyton Barber. If the player lost five yards on the carry, it meant it was Ronald Jones. Right. Yeah. So that backfield concerns me tremendously because we're trying to scrape and find value, especially with Bruce Arians, and I don't know if you got the player that can do it. Sure, and I'll, the throw, team. I'll throw out Chicago because they aren't playing. We have, they're giving us nothing. Uh, in, they're, they're not giving us the insight into, okay, we, we can actually have the freak out that David Montgomery got the first eight snaps and then it was Mike Davis and Tariq Cohen. They, they aren't. They aren't pulling a Wizard of Oz and showing us behind the curtain. So that is that's so you, you get skittish about it's that. It's a little sketch. Well, you're paying a fourth round, maybe a late third, third round, round yeah. pick for David Montgomery. So the, that's the backfield that has me a little squeamish. The the other one that's less selfish, just from what I've seen, that has me a little worried would be the Bengals with Joe Mixon. Their offensive line has looked as bad as advertised or as worried with the injuries. Uh, they, you know, the amount of offensive miscues and holdings and like it's either they they have a successful run because there was holding on it and it gets called back <laughs> or they didn't hold. So Joe Mixon has nowhere to run. That's concerning. That's like what we saw with Todd Gurley a couple of years ago when he went from his rookie year and he was great. The this, this next year he had nowhere to run and everyone's calling him a bum. All right, congratulations on the big win, even though Enjoy you're an Eagles fan. Enjoy your signed David Johnson helmet. Thank you, Pristine Auction. That is going to wrap up this episode of the show. Again, big shout-out to Pristine Auction, our studio sponsor, our tour partner. If you haven't checked out Pristine Auction, head over there, pristineauction.com. And again, a big thanks to St. Jude. This, yes. this is the wrap-up of the whole tour. This is it. Back home. Football is starting. It's going to be a lot of fun. Thank you, Phoenix, so much. And if you're listening at home, we'll see you on Tuesday. I hope you crushed your draft. I'm sure you did. Goodbye. Goodbye.
you for listening to another edition of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Don't forget to visit us on the web at www.thefantasyfootballers.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. All right, today's episode was brought to you by Head & Shoulders and Walmart. No matter where you fall on the offense and defense debate, Head & Shoulders will give you a 100% flake-free scalp. I say it's offense, Mike. I say it's defense. Uh, did you know that Troy Polamalu's hair was insured for $1 million by I Head & now. Shoulders in 2010? Check out Head & Shoulders at walmart.com, or you can look and find it at your local Walmart store.